Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of prosthetic adenocarcinoma and the type of adenocarcinoma here is the commonest type which is Essina adenocarcinoma. We are looking at a complete transverse section of the prostate gland. This is the posterior surface, this is the anterior surface. The lateral lobes are here and here and we have the anterior and posterior lobes. The location of the tumour is predominantly in the left lateral lobe with a small area of tumour in the right lateral lobe and these are both also at the posterior surface of the prostate gland. So let's first have a quick recap of normal prostate histology and we can see here that normally the prostate is composed of these lobules of glands and the lobules are sort of relatively well delineated and in between the lobules of glands, we have some smooth muscle bundles and some fibrous tissue. So we have a fibromuscular stroma. Now, if you look at the glands, you'll notice that the benign glands have an interesting feature that the epithelium is actually double layered. We have an outer basal cell layer and an inner luminal cell layer. And this is normal and it's a good indication that we are dealing with benign prosthetic tissue. Let's move on to the area of malignancy and you may actually be able to notice that there are a lot of very small glands here in between the larger benign glands. These do not form any lobulated outlines and they're sort of crawling everywhere. This is all cancer and these areas are all cancerous. Let's move to an area where we can directly compare benign and malignant tissue. So here we have larger benign bilayered prosthetic glands and in between we have malignant glands. For example, we have a malignant gland here, malignant glands all over here and this is a benign gland. If we do a side-by-side -side comparison, we will first notice that the malignant glands only have a single layer of epithelium and secondly, the nuclei in the malignant glands are larger than those in the benign glands. And thirdly, the malignant cell nuclei also exhibit prominent nucleoli, for example, here, 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 and here. We don't see them in every single cell because it depends on the plane of cutting of the nucleus. And we don't see these prominent nucleoli in the benign cell nuclei. So we have malignant glands that do not form a lobular architecture. The malignant glands have relatively uniform nuclei, but they are larger and have prominent nucleoli in contrast to benign glands. And the malignant glands only have a single layer of lining epithelium. One feature is very important in prosthetic carcinoma for prognostication, and this is the Gleason score of the tumor. So the Gleason score is calculated in a radical prostatectomy specimen by grading the most prevalent or predominant area and the second most predominant area. And we add up the two grades and that gives us the Gleason score. So the Gleason grade actually goes from grade one to grade five, but most of the time for carcinomas, we start at grade three. So the overall Gleason score starts at six, which is three plus three, all the way up to 10, which is five plus five. And for example, a score of 3 plus 3 means that basically the entire tumour is composed of Gleason grade 3 tumour. Let's have a closer look at how we perform Gleason grading. This is an extract taken from the College of American Pathologists online protocols for evaluation of radical prostatectomy specimens by pathologists. And the Gleason score essentially is the addition of two grades. So grade A is the most prevalent area and grade B is the second most prevalent area. But let's take a look at the case that we have just seen. And we can see that this is comprised mostly of discrete, very well formed glands. And this would fall into grade three because you can see the glands are discrete. This is taken from another case and you can see that instead of the glands being just single and spaced apart, they are all sharing walls. So we see many glandular openings and shared walls and this falls into Gleason grade 4. 
And here is yet a different case, and we can see that there are some benign bilayered prostatic glands here. This is where the tumor is. There is no gland formation here. Instead, we see some cords of malignant cells. This falls into Gleason grade 5. So for example, if the most prevalent area is 3 and the second most prevalent area is 5, then the Gleason score would be 3 plus 5 equals 8. And Gleason score is a very important prognostic feature in prostatic adeno CA. The higher the score, the worse the prognosis. Here is an example of a virtual gross pathology specimen showing prostatic adeno CA. And if we look at the labels, this is actually the prostate gland involved by tumor. This is the bladder. There is narrowing of the urethra, which leads to thickening and trabeculation of the bladder wall. And there is obstruction all the way up to the kidney, so you can see that there's actually hydronephrosis. This is the abdominal aorta, and we can see very enlarged, abnormal, matted lymph nodes that contain metastatic carcinoma. Just magnifying the area of the prostate gland, and this irregular, fleshy area is where the tumor is. If you would like full access to our online virtual pathology museum with more than 700 virtual specimens, you simply need to register for PathWeb. Registration is free and you can find the link in the video description. Hence, in summary, this is an example of Essina adenocarcinoma of the prostate gland. The predominant grade here is Gleason grade 3, and in comparison with benign glands, the malignant glands have a single layer of epithelium without an outer basal cell layer. The nuclei are larger than those of the benign glands, and also the nucleoli are prominent in the cancer cells as opposed to the benign cells. At low magnification, we also see that the malignant glands do not form any appreciable lobular configuration. They seem to be crawling all around and going in between benign glands. Thank you.